Hi, and welcome along to the All Guns Blazing podcast. Merry Christmas to everybody, it's uh, Christmas time, and we've got a very special show today. As usual, we've got DT in the building. How you doing, bro? And a very special guest, Jay Boffroyd, um, former Arsenal player, of course, who came up through Arsenal's academy, has played for various clubs. <laughs> um, he's gonna re- he, he was saying to me earlier, he can't even remember all of them, right? Um, and now playing his football in Japan. But I know with Jay, he's still a massive Arsenal fan. He was born in Islington, right? So you, you, you're Arsenal through and through. And I know, even from afar, when he's playing in Japan, he tweets me every now and again, and I see the frustration <laughs> coming out. I see the joy coming out. You know what I mean? He's diehard Arsenal fan, so it's really good to have you on, Jay. Really to brilliant you, to have you here. And, um, you know, it's going to be good, because we're going to be able to get a lot of insight um, from you um, mm. into Arsenal. Of course, we now have a new manager. Mikel Arteta is the mm. new manager of Arsenal, I'm, I'm going to be asking both of you guys today if uh, you think it's a gamble, or if you guys think it's um, you know forward thinking by the board and could be a great appointment because uh, it has definitely you know split opinion. Um, first of all, just before we get into that, um, uh, here we go. Eight, eight, eight. Oh, you said it right this week. <laughs> 888, yeah. I took my time and said it right. Yeah, no, they that. have another video. Remember these videos that they do, they're brilliant. The link's in the description. Click onto that um, description and you can go over there and comment. Make sure you say that AFTV sent you. Um, watch this one. So my unpopular opinion involves Tottenham Hotspur and I just don't understand why they are perceived to be such a big club. Your great granddad saw you win the double and somehow you think you're relevant today. Mauricio Pochettino, fine, you got to a European Cup final, he lost it. Fine, you could have won the league against Leicester, you finished third. So that, that's controversial. The only thing about that, I know Rory is a Chelsea fan, no mm. mention of Arsenal in there. That's the thing that, that's bugging me with that is that like he's just thinking Chelsea and Tottenham two biggest clubs well, no, in London. He, he did say they're the you know possibly where, they're going to be the third. I, yeah, I, I think that he's not mentioning us because he knows that we're bigger than them, so it's not worth getting into that discussion. It's between them and Spurs, but I would put Spurs in the bracket of QPR and other London <laughs> clubs. You know, it's kind of like I'd even put them in the same bracket as my team. You know, we're London based now. So that's your totally unbiased opinion. It's not unbiased. I think everyone will agree with me in the comment section. I couldn't care less. I think Arsenal ladies are bigger than Spurs. (laughs) What do you think, Joe? Yeah, of course, Arsenal are the biggest team in London. That goes without saying. Um, Tottenham, I mean, they're they're coming good. They Mm. are coming good. Um, I think they've got good players. Um, Of course, they've got Harry Kane, arguably, you know, the best striker in the world, one of. They've got a, a great stadium now, but I mean, this again, you know, they haven't done much really. So it's like, it's, wise. Yeah, it's like the guy said in the video, they ain't won anything. No. That's the yeah. thing, that's the thing about it. I think if you're being completely honest, right, you have to look on it and say, at the moment, right, they're making big strides. they I look at them at the moment and I think a lot of the things they're doing, they're doing better than us. I could care less. Right? No, no, no. Th- th- listen. You're not going to get me to say anything. Any I know I'm not going to get you to say nothing, but I'm just trying to be honest on it now, right? The appointment of Mourinho, that's, whether we like him or not, whether you that's think about Mourinho, that's a big move. That's we, bold. Know, we all know that. We all know that, right? They've got built that new stadium. I've been there. It is decent. Mm. It's actually more than decent, but I'm not going to say that to Tottenham fans, right? But it, it looks, just did. I know. No, I can't <laughs> help it. But it, is, it, is, it is a nice stadium. So now they've, you know, so they're trying to direct everything towards being big, right? And it's a threat to us. If we don't get our act together, it's a threat mm. to Arsenal. But at the moment, when you look at the worldwide fan base and stuff like that of Arsenal, oh, Arsenal definitely the biggest. But then if you start to look at trophies and that in recent times, you have to say Chelsea, Yeah, it? of course. You know what of I mean? Course. So this is why I look on these things and I'm like, Arsenal need to get their act together. They need to get their act yeah, together know, because these I've been, teams... this, I've been saying this for years though. Arsenal have been doing things wrongly for years and years. And now you see teams like Tottenham, you know, they've got, their, they got things together. They've got good players. They've got, set, they've got assets they can even get rid of and bring money in to buy other players. Mm. Arsenal, you know, I, I love the team. I love them. But... Realistically, what assets do Arsenal really have to sell to get money to buy someone else? 
Yeah. yeah. There's only a handful. Yeah, it's, this is, it's been, it, yeah. It, you know, as I said, th- those clubs look like they're being run well, whereas our club... But anyway, let's, let's talk about, you know, something that our club have done, which mm-hmm. is after three weeks again, mm-hmm. kind of what you, the point that you make, Joe, they've appointed a new manager. Tottenham did mm-hmm. that literally the next morning. Yeah. Pochettino went, who, you know, a lot of their fans wouldn't have been unhappy if he'd stayed. And by the next morning, they had a new manager. We've taken three weeks to appoint a new manager. Mm-hmm. And that manager is Mikel Arteta. No experience of managing any football club. Number two for about, he's been there for about three years, hasn't he? He was at Arsenal for five years as a player, yeah. so he'll know the club. Been at Man City for about three years. Under Pep Guardiola, they've won everything apart from, you know, the Champions League, but they've yeah, won yeah. absolutely everything. They've been all dominant. He's been next to Guardiola, seeing how Guardiola operates. Um, what do you guys think of this appointment, right? Is this a complete gamble? <laughs> Or is this a positive appointment by a board that are looking f- forward thinking, saying to themselves, you know what, we're not just going to go for uh, Ancelotti or something like that. It seems like a safe thing. Mm. We're building for the future. We're going to go for somebody young, hungry, has been under Guardiola. Remember, they wanted him even before then, yeah. right? Because, you know, so they've, they've fought highly of this guy for a long time. Well, l- let me start with you, DT. Um, good appointment? Um, it's a gamble. I'm not going to deny that. It's definitely a gamble. I'm a little disappointed I never got a call back because I actually applied for the job. (laughs) I'm not even joking, Robbie. Yes, you think I'm joking. I applied. I wrote to the club. I have actually managed more games than Mikel Arteta with my own team, technically. (laughs) So I did apply. So I'm hoping to get a um, refusal letter, you know, thank you for your uh, interest and whatnot. And people think I'm genuinely joking, I didn't, I applied for the job. Oh my God, I I wouldn't be boss, you know. I was gonna have you as my assistant. (laughs) 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 You'd be the chairman. (laughs) I wouldn't um, mind that. It's a gamble, it is a gamble. But getting Ancelotti could have been a gamble. No, but Ancelotti. I know he's got, listen, it's Mm. stop interrupting me. All right, you've got to go outside the door <laughs> about this, all right, wait. And just let me speak. It is a gamble. Any managerial, you know, appointment is a gamble because you don't know whether it's going to work or not. Any signing of a player is a gamble, you know, but... But there's obvious gambles. Yeah, there's... But we need to get behind it. As fans, we have to get behind it. We can't, you know, start making all these comparisons and now saying, you know, yeah, but he's the manager. Get behind it. You can get behind it. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah, yeah. I, I, but I what I'm a... saying is, there's a lot of fans, and I've seen it, where they're already saying, "Ah, oh, no, I'm, I'm not going to back him. I'm not." Well, no, it's wrong. Well, that's it's wrong. wrong. It's should, wrong. Everybody it's wrong. should get it's behind wring. it. But can you not understand? I where understand fans are coming where there's from reservations. This guy's got no. I know experience. Don't I mean, me Jay, what do to you me, think? To me, it's a gamble purely for the fact that he hasn't managed before. There's been loads of number twos. You know, that are good number twos, but as soon as they take the reins, you know, they failed. Paul mm. Clement, who was at Real Madrid, uh, exactly. with, with Ancelotti, wasn't he? Um, yeah. And, to, and Bayern, to, and then took a job on his own, it didn't work out. To, to me, I think, you know, I would have liked to have seen someone like Simeone, because I think Arsenal needs someone like Simeone, to be honest, defensive, organised. I think, you know, if you look at Arsenal's team, going forward, you know, you've got good attacking players, but we've been shocking in defence for years and years and years. And I think every time I see Arsenal linked to a player, it's a forward, it's a winger, it's an attacking midfielder. It's like, oh, no, who, no. surely you can see the, the frailties of the Arsenal defence and you know can see so many goals, it's unreal. But I think Arteta, it is a gamble, but I think they're trying to create a philosophy. Like, you know, Guardiola is probably, you know, but what, what don't, you know, and, and again, I'm saying, agreeing with what DT says, we have to get beyond. I did a video a couple of days ago saying that <clears throat> whatever you think, you've got to get beyond the manager. He's going to, he's going to need us because yeah, it's a time. hard enough job. But don't you think, Jade, and when you look on it and you think to yourself, this team at the moment, I would describe it as in a crisis. Definitely. Right? Mm. Now, is it right in a crisis to bring in somebody who has absolutely no experience in managing a football club. I mean, it's not the same as being a number two. You're going to have to come in now. You're going to have to take the reins. You're going to have to deal with all those problems, right? 
Um, we've heard problems behind the scenes with, uh, um, you know, Urzil, Abamyang, Lapazette. You know, we, we don't know whether they're true or not, but there's been rumours coming out about other players behind the scenes. There's players that need to be moved on. There's um, the fact that our form is terrible. Like you said, defensive problems, a lack of confidence, injuries now. I've just seen that Tierney's out until March. Kalasinac is out. You know, is this the job for a novice? Cheers, mate. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think so. I would. I mean, I would have even like to see Pochettino, to be honest. Um, Arsenal is one of the most difficult jobs in world football at the moment. Mm. Let's be real. Because the mm. expectation that Arsenal fans have, and as a club, like we said, you know, they're one of the biggest clubs in the world still, like it or not. To get back to Champions League football and competing for titles is going to take years because no. you are I, I mean I don't see it are Arsenal owners prepared to put 500 million into the club and you know do what someone like Man City does Chelsea does I'm not sure about that mm. which means you've got to then rely on youth players coming through you know and probably having Arteta there that will probably happen you know he, he can bring through youth players but spending money Arsenal's never been like that since I've you know been alive since you played it yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jesus I mean Christ. Yes. A, a time like this as well right DT the point that you make right you're mm. saying that get behind the, the um, Arteta mm-hmm. but you're already complaining that there's some fans that are already saying they're not going to get behind him I, I, you know which mm. is shocking but yeah. there's a lot of fans and even some of them are getting behind him they're like mm, good, yeah. uh, don't you think at that this time we could have done with a unifying force as a manager somebody who would have come in and when they took over now everybody would be like wow yeah, do you know man. what Robbie I honestly believe <coughs> that no matter who you appointed there would have been a divide somewhere honestly because when you was looking at Ancelotti's name being mentioned there was people saying that he's passed it he's not good enough he's a dinosaur in terms of tactics there's a reason why Napoli got rid of him etc etc so there was the divide then you go to Pochettino there were people I don't want him because he not won nothing at Spurs he's no good so there was a divide there you could get Pep Guardiola in and people would still moan because they would say yeah but he needs 500 million to build a side like Man City he won't be able to do that at Arsenal no matter who you go for yeah but of all those people you're saying the one that even more people are going to yeah, say is Arteta I understand they're gonna, that yeah because he's because never managed a, yeah. I understand that don't get me wrong I've got no problem with anyone having an opinion and thinking that way I also have my reservations <clears> and my <throat> concerns that what if this goes wrong it could turn so sour so quick but what I want and I hope is that the fans can all get together to get behind him and I've been very honest in some of the stuff that I've said, okay? When I looked at Unai Emery and the Ozil situation, for example, it was very clear that Unai Emery wanted Mesut Ozil out of the club and he laid down his stance pretty early. When we started not winning, the natural reaction from fans, including myself, is, well, we're not creating nothing. We're not doing nothing. Ozil needs to be playing because you're paying him all these wages, but he's just sitting on the bench. When you look at it now, Maybe Unai Emery was right. And maybe we should have backed him more in the Ozil situation. Uh, Don't get me wrong, Emery had to go and the football was bad and everything else. But in that specific detail, we should have probably backed him. But DT, yeah, even if you back him in that moment, you still got to get rid of him. Yeah, I understand that. Who's going to give Ozil in this current form 350 pounds a week? No one. So he's not going to leave, whether you back no. him or not. He's just going to sit there and collect he's his money. He's definitely not yeah. going to China no more, is Yeah, he? exactly. He's <laughs> definitely not going that, to China. That, that move to China is definitely off. Yeah, that's definitely off. So I, I think that I, with, with that situation, I think that with him and Alexis at the time were both running down their contract, with Arsenal getting rid of Alexis, <coughs> they were then put into a position of right we need to sign him we need to tie him down so the fans think right we've got some ambition they're paying the big wages now and it kind of yeah I and agree it just hasn't worked but, but why do Arsenal always allow the players to run their contracts down that's the problem I have yeah. if you look at Daniel Levy he never lets that happen really only just now with Ericsson mm. he never lets players run their contract down even if you want to go out on loan you have to sign a new deal to go out on loan 
he doesn't let players run their contract down so they can just walk away for nothing. Arsenal let that happen mm. all the time. Do you not think a lot mm. of players are starting to do that as well now? Because you see it at quite a few clubs that a lot of players are, I suppose you can say a lot of them are on so much wages that they, they've become comfortable because they're like, you know what, if I'm earning 150 grand at one club and you know this other club, they want, the club want to push me out and there's another club offering me 80,000, you're sitting there thinking, well, I don't want to go. Why do no. I want half my wage? Yeah, Why do, do I want to want to leave? If you yeah. want me to, so you kind of it feels very much like there, it's more player power now mm. than you yeah. know the way yeah. it is. And you're you're within the game. You mm. you would know better than anyone yeah, I mean, else. It's always like that player power. You know, you can't sack a player. You know, at the end of the day, and if that yeah. player doesn't want to move to a club or he doesn't look at look what Arsenal really. Arsenal is in London, a great city. He's getting three hundred and fifty grand a week. Why does he want to leave a London for? Yeah. Why does he want yeah. to leave Arsenal for? It's a comfort zone for him. Yeah. Let me let me just um. I wanted to show you guys this, right? You guys can see that headline. It says Arsenal riot over. I see Bingham. that. I see that. You seen that? Now I this, see that. Yeah, that was this, yeah. this headline. All we're trying to do, we're trying to get it up on the screen, right? This headline was in um. I think it was the Daily Mirror when we appointed Arsene Wenger. Arsenal riot over Wenger. And so, was AFTV not around then? No, we weren't around then. Who <laughs> oh. was doing the clickbait in then? We, we weren't around. Who wrote that story? It was Harry Harris, the late Harry Harris, who used to be a, um, a journalist there. Let, let me see, let me read what he said at the time here. Yeah? It said, Crisis Club Arsenal are facing a massive fans' revolt <laughs> after handing the manager's job to Frenchman Arsene Wenger. Remember, we weren't around at this time. Don't blame AFTV, right? And it says, Former Monaco coach Wenger has agreed to become the £400,000 a year boss, even though he still has two months of his contract to run with Japan's Grampus 8. The bombshell comes after Johan Cruyff priced himself out of the market with sky-high demands. Arsenal immediately turned to Wenger, a personal friend of Vice Chairman David Dean, who coached Glenn Hoddle at Monaco. Disgusted supporters last night warned that Wenger's appointment will spark a riot. Right, and that, <laughs> so th that was when that was when Wenger got the job. So yeah. I remember when Wenger came in, everybody was like, who's Wenger? Who is I, I was there, right? I was there. You, I didn't you, know who, you, I didn't you, know who it was. What, I mean, what was, the, what was the reaction amongst the the, uh, the players and that when Wenger I, came in? Yeah, I mean, I didn't even know. All I knew was that he was there for about a month and the whole lunch was changed. We was having jacket potatoes with cheese and beans and all that. And all of a sudden it was just plain spaghetti <laughs> and water. <laughs> and I was like, what's going on there? You know? <laughs> but I mean, it. He, he turned out to be great and he helped a lot of players like before mm. the way I used to play was you know I, obviously I'm 6'3 and you know it was kind of hit the target man that Alan Smith yeah, kind of style yeah. and don't get me wrong Alan Smith was effective and he was great for Arsenal mm. but as soon as he came it was kind of like no no forget all that now we've got to pass and move and he trained all the players the same way it was all about to feet um, mm. you know f through balls second and third man running and all that kind of stuff whereas before it was just up to, you know, mm. Alan Smith kind of thing, right mm. off him. I could just imagine you at the time thinking, who's he come from, come from Japan? What does he know about, and yeah. now you're playing in Japan? Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. I don't know, there was talk of him going back to Japan just recently. They were mm. talking about, because you know, Zico's gone back to yeah. um, Kashima as a sporting director, and they were talking about him going back to mm. Nagoya as a sporting director mm. as well. But I mean, at the time I was thinking, mm. I don't know, who's this guy? Yeah, but the, the point I'm making with that is that at the time everybody was like, yeah. Literally, as they say, well, we, we know these papers exaggerate, but people talking about Arsenal fans so upset. They're going to riot. That they might riot about Wenger coming in, and he was an unknown, and look what he did. So, do we have to look at Arteta in the same way? I think one difference is, though, Wenger had still managed. He'd managed at Monaco, well, no, he'd, managed, he'd managed in Japan. There's a bigger difference than that. Wenger inherited a back four. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's true. Arsenal's not coming in if with you a look crisis. At Arsenal's success, though, over all the years, Arsenal have traditionally had a good back line. That's where mm. Arsenal's success yeah. come from. And you know, obviously, he brought in good players as well, good attacking players. But Arsenal have always been solid. Mm. I, you know, I it was think always one nil to the Arsenal. Yeah, I, I think that Wenger inherited a much better squad than what Mikel Arteta is going to inherit. You got to remember, we just signed Dennis Bergkamp. We had Wrighty there. You have the back line. You had. 
the basis, the core, the structure. It was mm. all there. But and then but he sprinkled. He, but he did he did take over a club in crisis. Yeah, I see what you said. And also, if every Arsenal fan or most Arsenal fans at the start of this season looked at our squad and said, you know what, I think that's good. Not to win the league or nothing like that, but I think a lot of us looked at it and said, that's all right. That's it's decent. Now we can get, get in the top, top four with that. Yeah. Oh, you didn't think you didn't look yeah. on it, Jay, and think it was good enough to get into the top four at this the squad. start at the start of no. the season, not now at no. the start. I you said it. if you look at my Twitter, I said six, six or seventh. I said it because they don't have a back line. Mm. That's the point. I remember, like you said, Wenger came, and as much as Wenger came and he changed the philosophy, Pat Rice was there. He was working with that back four all the time. He used to take the back four and work them by themselves. So they, they knew it exactly where to go. You know, when someone goes in, someone drops and covers and all that. He that, that was just like second nature for them. Well, Arteta, though, th- th- he's now been under such a, you know, the best coach for the last three years. Will he be able to bring some of that to Arsenal? We, you, you know, um, you've, you've worked with so many managers. Mm. And a number two, a lot of times, does a lot of the stuff on the training ground, don't they? Yeah. Right? So do you think he'll be able to bring a lot of what he's learnt from Guardiola to Arsenal, which is organisation for starters. I mean, you saw how well organised. And also what impressed me about Man City when we played them the other day was the fight. Mm. Look how many fouls they committed and stuff like that. They they did everything to stop us as well, right? It wasn't just their brilliant attacking play. So do you think he can bring some of that to us? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, obviously he would have been learning underneath Guardiola. Guardiola is arguably one of the best managers in the world. Um, And from what I hear, you know, all the players love playing for him. Um, And he has learnt. And, you know, he will bring certain ideas and a philosophy, like as soon as you lose the ball, win it back, the high press, you know, all that kind of stuff. But... I knew a was coming. But Arteta's (laughs) still got players that are nowhere near as good as the Man City players. Like, there's Mm -hmm. not one player in Arsenal's uh, squad that can get in Man City's team, for me, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Not Mm -hmm. one. And that's the problem. And I think in order for Arteta to be successful at Arsenal, he needs money in as, as, as soon as possible mm. to bring in some quality mm. players. And I'm talking about quality defenders first. Yeah. Do you, do you think Arteta's going to get the respect? The one thing I remember when, when Arteta was um, at Arsenal as a player, I remember saying to one of my guys that I, I know at Arsenal, saying to him, when he was made captain, I remember saying to him, Arteta, a captain, because he always just seemed quite a quiet, <laughs> quiet yeah. reserve. And I remember I said to them, I'm going, Arteta, a captain. And I remember I would, he, the guy stopped me in my track straight away and said, Robbie, one thing about Arteta, in that dressing room, natural leader. Mm-hmm. No surprise that he's been yeah, made captain. You are, you are, I, I, I didn't know that because you it. just look at someone and you look at their demeanour, yeah. but I remember him saying to me that then. Mm. So... Do you think that this guy is going to have what it takes to go in there and sort that dressing room out? Because as you said, yeah. he's been a, a, next to Guardiola. <laughs> Listen. And is he going to be the sort of guy that's not going to mess around? Does he seem that type of way to you two guys? I mean, what do you both think? I think he is. I think he looks like he comes across as that type of person. And what we need, or what he needs, is to go in, establish himself as the boss. If you're not part of the, you, you know, the way he wants to go, <coughs> out the door. And that's where the club have got to back him and say, all right, cool. If this player's not what you want or he's not doing, out the door. Is he going to be a big enough character to take on Urza? <laughs> a Bammy Yang well, and people like that. We're going to find out. He's, he's working with characters at Man City. Yeah. Bigger characters than Urza at Man City. Some big, big names. Big names. Big personalities. And, and they're putting in big performances as well. We can, we can, people like Kevin De Bruyne. You know, mm, he's yeah. dealing with them kind of personalities. Guardiola doesn't let you know, personalities get to him. Mm. If he don't like you, you're gone. Yeah. You know, it's that simple. And I think Arteta would have learned of that and seen that. And I think he'll do the same thing at Arsenal. It's harsh reality. Yeah. Mm. See, even when Guardiola first came in, if you remember who he bought in goal was... Um, Bravo. Yeah, mm. he bought him in, spent a lot of money first year. Within that year, it was like, not good enough. He even done that with Hart. He didn't even get in the club. He said Hart needs to go. Yeah. And Hart was, England, Hart was England goalkeeper at the time. England number one. That's yeah. what I mean. So he, he, he will push them out the door. Yeah, well, he's a Guardiola. Yeah, but, yeah, but listen. Both of you are talking about Guardiola. Yeah, 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 about yeah, but Arteta. Robbie, Robbie, you've got to remember, right? I like listening and talking to people that are within the game. 
that know a lot more than we do. Oh, okay, all right. And, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry, mate. All right, go on. Don't worry about me and my contacts. Don't worry about me and my contacts. Don't worry about me and my contacts, right? But no, what I, the people within the game that are speaking about Arteta, he comes very highly regarded. Like a lot of Raheem Sterling's, you know, current form and the way he's playing is being credited to Arteta and the way he's worked him on the training pitch. You know, so Guardiola's the main man, but you need a good number two. You need a number two is more than just someone that puts the cones well, you out. You know what as well? He's gonna need a good number two as well. That's gonna be the thing as well. well. He's gonna need some good. We've back, taken the guys good, from good, Man City as well. He's gonna we? need good backroom staff, isn't it? Is because, that right? Yeah, yeah, there's some serious people like it, I, I know there's not that many out there, but I have spoken to some Man City fans, and they, <laughs> they, they um, I, 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 this is why it's so popular everywhere he goes. You know what I mean? but, this is why when he goes to away grounds, you know, what I mean? you say DT, I'll see you after the yeah, game, yeah, 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 and then you later. go the other way. You know what yeah, yeah, I mean? But he, I, I spoke to one the other day, and he said to me, he said, "Look, have you watched the Man City documentary on Amazon?" And, um, yeah, a lot of and, people are referring to this. Yeah, and I went and watched it, and I'm not trying to get an endorsement for Amazon, but <laughs> you can contact my agent if needed. Um, but they um, they said, go and watch it, and go and watch what Arteta does within it, and you'll see about his man management and the way he is yeah. and everything. And I like the way that he comes across in it. And he, like you said, like Jay was saying as well, the characters and the personalities that are at Man City, every one of them respected Mikel Arteta everyone when he spoke they listened mm. there was no you know big egos or anything like that they respected him and they listened but they're willing to learn as well yeah that's the thing it's like, a willing people, club, yeah, yeah. If yeah you look at sterling like he's gone from strength to strength he got hammered when he left liverpool yeah and saying oh he's going there for money and everything but if you look at his game you know he was really really good at liverpool but then he's gone to Man City and yeah. he's like, what's he scored? Like, he's top goal scorer this year. Yeah. Do you remember as well, but he, he played the Man tournament City. for England, I think it was the World Cup or Euros, one of the two, just before he really kicked on with Man City and he had that dreadful tournament yeah, where he, he couldn't hammered. score and mm. he was getting hammered in the press and, and he's gone to Man City, he's kept his head down and they've completely you know, changed his game and just a few little tweaks. And one of the things I noticed what Arteta was saying was that when Sterling used to receive the ball as a wide player, he used to be like with his back touch tight to like the defender. So he's facing towards where the ball's coming. When that ball comes into his feet, the only thing he can do with that ball is give it back. Yeah. So what they did was they switched his body stance. So he's sideways on as Half that turn. ball comes in. Mm. So the moment it comes in, he can lay it off or spin. He's got the whole picture of the pitch around him. And that little tweak has completely changed his game. Now, when you look at a lot of Sterling's performances, mm. the balls will come into him. And where the defender's coming in like this, flat-footed, he's already on the spin. He knows his next no, move no, and he's got. can work that magic on Pepe. Well, you, you know can only so hope. You can only hope. Yeah. Again, I think, like you said, I think that's Arteta working with them. There's details. You can yeah. see <laughs> that the coaches are working. Don't get me wrong, Guardiola's working as well. Mm. But... You need good coaches. You yeah, need. You good need if you look at even a lot of a lot of the play ex players that um that played for Man United, that played for Alice Ferguson, they always said that you know a lot of the coaches were the people that done a lot of the mm. sessions mm. and Mike Phelan and yeah. stuff. But the, the, Dan, this is the point, though, right? A lot of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 hear me now. Hear me now. On that. Hear me now. You are right with mm. that, right? Then a lot of those number twos, but yeah, Mike Phelan, yeah, yeah. yeah. Carlos Queiros, all of them went on, Brian Kidd, to manage, every single one of them flopped. And even I was looking at trying to find examples of managers that have never managed before, that have gone into a big job. And it, the only one I can think of, and it's a great example if we can, yeah, is Kenny Dalglish. No, 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 I'll give you an it's example. It's Kenny Dalglish, isn't it? Kenny Dalglish went straight from a player, hadn't managed, and then I'll give you straight an example. in and did brilliantly. I'll give you an example. Pep Guardiola himself. Yeah, but he was managing even a Serie B, Serie B team, wasn't he? But what I'm it? saying is, that's like managing a reserve under 23. You're still side. managing. But this what guy I'm has not is, managed at yeah, all. Yeah, right, let me give you another example. Who was uh, number two under Guardiola and is now manager? Ten Hag. Ten Hag. Yeah. He's one. Yeah. And he's a good example. Did he go that's straight, that went, but did he go it, straight into managing well? Ajax? Luis Enrique, what has he done? Um... <coughs> I'm not sure. I think that he, he might have gone. He but well, did all these guys go? Well. What I'm trying to point the point directly. as well. This is directly. He's not even. I mean, at the start of the people people were saying Lampard. 
What's he done to get the Chelsea job? He had been managing all season at Derby. At Derby, yeah, you know? I, I know what you're I saying. I suppose you could but... look at somebody like a Stephen Gerrard who's gone in at Rangers as doing well, but that's Rangers. It's different level, you know, it's no different level to the Premier League. But Premier League is <clears throat> different to that. Yeah, yeah, more of course, two course. Teams. So I, it's I understand be a, the reservations. It's going to be a real wrong. tough time. We're going to come back to it. I want to talk a bit about Jay. <laughs> uh, Jay, you're here, um, and uh, you know, you've had a, you've had a, you've had a good career. Um, lots and lots of teams you're now playing over in Japan as I said earlier you know what I mean Izzet and Bourne came through the Arsenal Academy I remember when you was there a lot of people used to be talking very highly about you saying that you're the next big thing mm -hmm. you know what I mean talking about this guy have you seen him you know you know you got games you've seen Jay Pulford he's <laughs> got uh, right and you played a, a, a few games but you had that infamous moment, <laughs> right? I mean, I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna make you because you know what? I was thinking about it um, when he was coming on the show. It's kind of similar to the Jacker thing, <laughs> oh, and I really want to get your. I really want to get your opinion on it. But uh, tell us about that infamous moment. Tell us about first of all what it was like being at Arsenal and everything. Oh man! And then tell us about that infamous moment with you and Don Howe, where think, yeah, you, yeah. you know you threw the shirt down. Well, through the shirt, you through the shirt. If it's any, yeah, if it's any consolation, it, listen, 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 if it's any consolation, my old man hated Don Howe. All right, so he, he's got your back as well. He was well, a great coach, though, wasn't he, Don Howe? He was amazing. He was amazing. Yeah. All right, tell, I, let, let you tell us. So no, we, I think first of all, coming up at Arsenal, it was you know second to none. You know, as soon as Wenger got there, he changed everything around. It wasn't soon after that. You know, we moved into the new training ground, which was like amazing as well. Mm. And you know, my team. I mean, we just. just turn up on a Saturday and just kind of knew we was going to win. You know, we was that good. Um, but that particular instance in that game, you know, I guess it came because I, f I honestly put it down to the area I grew up in, you know, me having an attitude problem, me being young. Um, and, you know, I didn't like to be kind of told what to do, basically. And I remember that game in particular, it, it, I wasn't I wasn't playing that well to be honest but I remember there was a free kick and me and David Noble was ask, arguing about who's going to take it what not and I was getting annoyed with him because I wanted to take it and then my number came up to be subbed and he was like Jay look at that and I see my number and I was fuming because I was fuming with him to begin with and then as I was walking off I was just walking off and then to be honest I didn't my intention wasn't to like take my shirt off and throw it at him it was more like just to drop it, but I I, I did that. And what was this kind of, under twenty three game? Under eighteen under, game. Is not, un, under nineteen. Under nineteen. Yeah, and I just kind of I I dropped it in that way and it hit him, and you know that was kind of. And what do you say? Like it's kind of, kind of a look, but then Liam Brady come to me afterwards and was like, "Come and see me on Monday morning in my office," and then it just kind of went from there. He said, "I want to put you on a transfer list," and. And it was just instant that that was from doing that. Yeah, that was it's instant that they're getting rid of you. I it mean, wasn't did even you, that. Did, did you plead your case or? No, obviously I apologised and said you know it was it was wrong. It was in the heat of the battle. I was annoyed. I think they could have handled it better because I was young still. Mm. You know, if that, if that happened now, I don't think they would mm. handle it the same way. Um, Do you regret it? Yeah, I mean, I, I do, yeah, of course I regret it because, you know, I, I could have been playing for Arsenal, you know, and who knows what could have happened. Um, but I've still had a good career. Yeah, yeah, you know? of course. And I, what I always say is, for the ability I I have and had, especially at that, coming up there, I could have had a much better career. But I still achieved all the things I wanted to mm -hmm. when I was standing mm -hmm. in the playground with my friends. Yeah, you know, so no one can take that away from me. Everyone mm -hmm. says, oh, you only had one cap, but. How many people have had one cap? Mate. Mm. And so, you played against France as yeah, well. Exactly. It wasn't like against Moldova or someone like that. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So mm. for me, as much as I, you know, I could have had a better career mm. with the tools that I had, I still had a good one. Right, now let me ask you this question, right? The incident is very similar to the Granite Xhaka thing, right? Mm. Um, obviously, <laughs> Xhaka didn't throw the shirt at yeah. Emery. He didn't hit him earlier. And... Um, he did to rip the shirt off, and we don't know. Well, well, a lot he, of people don't know if he threw down, but he, in, similar in his frustration. Yeah, I mean, his number came up. Yeah. Um, some of those ironic cheers from the fans. Jacka was not happy about that, but then his reaction after that 
he took the captain's armband off and just threw that. But hold on a minute. He Remember, Vieira did it way before him. Vieira, Vieira dropped, got a red card and went off a few times and dashed his shirt on the floor. Mm. You know, so it's not, yeah, Jack had done it most recently, mm. but there was players doing it afterwards. Cause mm. I remember my mum was like, he done it. But then I'm like, Vieira's not one of the best players <laughs> in the country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vieira can get away with it. Yeah. So I was like, he can get Come away with it. Come on, Jay, let's go back down the club. That's out of order. I just that's saw Vieira like. do it. That's what it was like. It was like, she was saying that to me and I was like, mum, come on, man. Realistically, he's the best, one of the best midfielders in the world at the time. So with the Xhaka thing, do you think it was right how they dealt with it? Do you think that was the right way to deal with it? Because obviously they didn't sell him or nothing and they ha he has been able to come back into the team. Yeah, I think um, that was... But he did have, similar to you, that was like a moment of mad, absolute madness. Yes, yeah. I mean... Which is probably worse than yours because you got the whole world watching it as well. Well, it's worse because he's... And he's, he's an captain. adult. He's an adult, he's, he's captain. Captain mm. of the I team. I was a child when mm. I did it. You know, I was a teenager, like what, 17 years old when I did it, you know. Obviously, he's an adult, so it's even worse. But if you, the problem I have with Xhaka is that he obviously knows he's not in good form. Mm. he's not playing well so if you get dragged you come off and show a good attitude especially as captain you know you can't come off with that kind of attitude if he was playing well then maybe you might be thinking ah oh, this, this manager don't like me or whatever but he's not and he got dragged he has to were, were, were the fans out of order? no you don't, don't think so you, no. do you think the fans were out of order for you know ironic cheers when you play when... for a big club when you play for a big club there's expectation you have to perform if you're not performing you know, there's, you've got to take the good with the bad. You know, football players these days earn loads and loads of money. And at the end of the day, you have to perform. You have to train hard. You have to take the good with the bad. You know, it's not always going to be plain sailing. And for him, he should have been more professional with it. You know, do, you, do you think, because we hear this a lot nowadays. I mean, we even on AFTV were getting criticised for fans being critical of some of the players' performances. But you're saying as a player, you understand that fans are going to be critical if you're not performing. Yeah, because, listen, fans work 9 to 5 and go into the most expensive ground in the league. And if you're not performing, you, you have your right to give your opinion. You pay your money, you can give your opinion. You can shout, you can stand up, you can boo. That's your, that's your hard-earned money. You're, you're travelling around up north, like you said, to Belgium, driving six, seven hours, and then you see people putting in you know, substandard performances, you're allowed to voice your opinion. You know, it's up to the player to be professional and block that out mm. and, and still stay professional. When you then left Arsenal, I mean, that must have been heartbreaking. As I said, uh, you want to be an Arsenal player. Yeah, that I'll... moment of madness has happened. As you said, you're very young mm. and then that's been ripped away from you. How hard was it then? What was it Coventry you went to after? Yeah. How hard was it to go from being at Arsenal, like you said, brand new training ground, everything like that, then go to Coventry. I mean, I was up there a couple of weeks ago, my son's um, mm. at academy and they play Coventry and mm. <laughs> the facility is yeah. nowhere near yeah. Yeah. what, you know, so. <laughs> I um, remember because Arsenal had like 10 pitch. I never went on the same pitch more than once. You know, that many pitches, there's like 10 pitches under, you know, under underground heating and all that kind of stuff. And then I went to Coventry and, you know, there's one training pitch. And, and like, <laughs> but at the time it was like Gordon Strachan was there and actually the team was decent Coventry were like finishing mid-table and whatnot. there some good players Robbie Keane was there um, Yusuf Chippo <coughs> Adji mm. you know these kind of players and they were doing pretty well yeah. in, the, in the league but obviously leaving my boyhood team it was heartbreaking for me man but I didn't let it get to me in the sense that like I just tried to when I sat at home it was really upsetting for me but when I came out I was like yeah I don't care kind of thing yeah. mm. I put on the, the show do you know what I mean and but looking back at things you know I would have loved to play for Arsenal you know all my family are Arsenal supporters I used to walk to Highbury mm. to get a coach to go to London Colney you know it, it's that close for me but you know it is what it is you know it's, 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 it, because I think not enough people put I understand that because we always just look at football and say hello some money get it all mm. good but it must be <clears throat> making the adjustment, you know, to go to, and you, you went to multiple clubs, having to adjust every time at mm. all these different clubs. Wasn't that not, was that a hard thing? Yeah, it, yeah, it is. I mean, it's only till I, I had my, I told you earlier, till I had my problems at Wolves. I kind of, what were those? What? If you don't <laughs> mind, we'll come, we'll, come, we'll come to that, we'll come to that, we'll come to that. But it, it, 
for me is like a, when you when you sign your professional contract at that time it was like I've made it I've done it you know and then it's all of a sudden it's like the lifestyle then becomes you know kind of like you know I want to get a nice car I want to get nice things I want to show that I have money and blah 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 and then you know for me I kind of took my eye off the ball a little bit mm. and that's what kind of made me start going around and 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 kind of playing for clubs and then leaving after a year or two years and whatnot. And then obviously I went to I went to Wolves and I said to you, you know, the first season was all right. You know, I scored goals. I think I finished the top goal scorer for the club. I think it was, I think it was only like 13 goals or something, but I was top goal scorer for the club. But then me and Mick McCarthy had a falling out and he wanted to get me at the club. And I said to you, he was doing everything. He took my squad number off me. He, he he made me come and train by myself in the afternoons with Tony Daly, running around the pitches by myself. Then he would like call me at like such, like some silly time, like seven o'clock at night, come in, do a bike ride with me in the forest, give me some dead bike while he's got his bike's got like <laughs> twenty five gears and shreds on his wheels and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Making me go around the I don't know. Imagine some doing forest. all this to and I'm like, <laughs> every every say yeah, coming for a bike ride. <laughs> and then he's like putting, me, made me get changed in the with the youth team and all that kind of stuff. Wow, and he was he was trying to like force me out, but I used to come in with a smile on my face. Good morning, Gaffer. How are you? And I knew that hurt him, but I was I was still being professional. I, I'd done everything he wanted me to do, just because he was trying to upset me yeah. by doing all these things to me. So I was like, okay, I'll do the right thing, but I can upset you by just smiling at you. And then there was you know then uh, I changed agent. Sky Andrew, you know, got a hold mm. of me, the one that took you know sold time agent that, yeah. yeah, and. He came to my house and I remember he said some things to me that really put things in perspective for me. He made me feel really small. I was like, for someone of your ability, you're not doing anything near what you should be. And he said this in front of my wife and you know my son and it made me feel really small. And I remember I went to bed that night and I was like, I woke up the next morning, I was like, I'm gonna really dedicate myself now. I'm gonna change everything from, I'm changing my, the color of my boots. They're going black now. I'm not driving flashy cars, I'm just, gonna knuckle down and get my head right. And even though I was still going into Wolves, you know, I still try to keep that strong mindset. And then, you know, Dave Jones called me one morning and when I was on the way to training, he was like, this is Dave Jones. I was like, who's that? And he was like, Cardiff City manager. I was like, really? Like that. And he was like, yeah. And then he was like, I've got permission to talk to you come and see me now and I was like well, I'm on the way to training and he was like no you can come and see me now and then I drove down to Cardiff and that was it I never went back to Wolves so again you, you, you were excellent at Cardiff I mean, Cardiff was amazing for me but the, Dave Jones was amazing he had you know Terry Burton was there at the time as well mm. who's worked at Arsenal mm. as well and his philosophy was kind of you know, it was different to the championship, but it was like pass and move. All mm. the players were technical, you know, Peter Whittingham, Steve McPhail, you know, Bellamy came there, Aaron Ramsey came there. Mm. Um, it was a good club, it's a very good city. I'm sure you've been to Cardiff. Yeah, Cardiff's yeah. a bad you know, city, man. It's great, yeah. the fans are great. <laughs> and, and that's where I kind yeah. of went from strength to strength. Mm. And, you know, that's how I got, I reinvented myself. And I always say, you know, how 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 is it possible that Dave Jones can, take me from getting changed with the youth team to me playing for mm. England three years later and meet McCarthy so don't know yeah. how to do his man did you, did so you know I no, just want to say one thing but when you made your England debut do you know that you was the first ever Cardiff City player to get their England cap do you know what? I knew afterwards because there was a big thing in the paper you know, saying I'm the first and blah, 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 obviously, yeah. which is, you yeah, know, it's nice to go down. In 11 yeah. year history it's, or something, it was so, the first mm. ever Cardiff player to win wow. an England cap. Yeah, and so, in, in, do you, do you know the message that you just said there, like um, the contrast in managers and how one manager was able to get so much out of you, again, sort of comes back to the Arteta thing, doesn't it? In the, There's players in that team at the moment that are not as bad as what we're seeing at Arsenal. Mm. Mm. And that's going to be his job, isn't it? To do what yeah. Dave Jones did with you, is it? And like, yeah, get the best out of you, know about you and get the best out of you. Yeah. I think you have to, I think as a manager, especially <coughs> Arter, I think he has to come in, see what he's got, see how players respond, see their attitudes. You know, some players like getting ha need a, 
you know, can you swear? I kick up the, I kick up the <laughs> arse. I kick up the arse. <laughs> 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 yeah, some players like I kick up the arse and other players need an arm around their shoulder. What were you? I was kind of a bit of both in a sense that he kind of knew when I needed that. But a lot of the time he kind of just, you know, he supported me. He let me kind of, like my style of play is kind of like drifting around the pitch mm. and finding space. You know, you don't just tell me to stand there mm. because I, I want to be involved in the game. I'm, I, I don't want to just have like 10 touches in a game and be in a six yard box to score. I want to be involved, like have 30, 40 touches in a game. Mm. So I enjoy it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what Dave Jones let me do. He let me kind of play how I want to within his system. And I think when Arteta comes here, he has to, you know, see that with his players and get the best out of them. I think Emery came and was kind of like asking players to play out from the back. They weren't comfortable doing it. Yeah, I know, mm. I get what you mean. He was asking certain players to play his way, not yeah. their way. Yeah. And he didn't have the right personnel. Now, maybe that might be down to that he didn't get enough money, that he couldn't get certain yeah. players. So he's trying to, mm. you know, work with players that, you know, it, even you remember the first season with um, Czech. Mm. And do you remember, it was yeah. like that first game of the season, ironically, Man City, mm. first game of the season, yeah, yeah, and he scored the own goal when he kicked it. And it yeah. was like, you know, when you get your button stuck <clears> on FIFA, <laughs> <laughs> and, and the goalkeeper does some mad pass, and you start throwing your controller at the TV and stuff. But And yeah, you was asking, it's like teaching an old dog new tricks. And yeah. some players, they just, you look at Socrates, you could just tell by looking at him, he's not a player that's mm. comfortable on the ball like passing it to him and he's going to be like a Virgil van Dijk for example that's not his style but he's been asked to play yeah, it definitely. you know your striker the question I want to ask you actually is if you were coming up against the Arsenal defence right now you'd be buzzing wouldn't you I said do you know when Man City played them the other day I said to my friend he came just now I said to him this is going to be 4-5-0 because I know Arsenal plays so open and what you say what you you know playing against Arsenal you're always going to get a chance as a forward mm. you just know that you know there's teams that come like Norwich has 30 something shots mm. against like no disrespect to Norwich but that can't happen no you know and um, like, Burn Leno has made the m more saves than any keeper any he's amazing in the Premier League he's, he, if it no, wasn't him he Arsenal would be he lower he's, exactly but he shouldn't have that stat should he <laughs> no, he's made no. more saves than no. any keeper yeah. that's Southampton's keeper, Norwich's keeper, I know. Um, uh, Watford's keeper. He's made more saves I know. than all these and guys. And you know what annoys me is because Arsenal website, they're doing this big highlight reel and trying to make it look like it's a great achievement. It's not actually. It's not actually a great achievement because he shouldn't be put in that situation in the first place. Yeah, yeah. he shouldn't be. 100%. Do you think that Allison or <coughs> um, Edison and all them want that statistic? Mm. The only statistic that they care about as a goalkeeper is clean sheet, yeah. golden mm. glove. That's it. Not yeah. oh, I made the most saves. If, yeah, I did because my defense is shit. But Robert, if you go if you go back to Wenger, like we said, Wenger came in and he had was it Dixon, Winterburn, Adams, Bold or Keown? Mm. They're not they're not known for playing at the back. But I will tell you what they are known for defending. They love to defend. Mm. And I think what Arsenal need now is players that love to defend. Yeah, mm. win the ball, give it to the players. Yeah. And that's let what you need to do. Go let them go themselves. and exactly. Let them go and express themselves. And I think now there's too many football players, especially at Arsenal, mm. that are trying to dribble out from the back, play out from the back. And I remember, like Pat Rice, if it's not on, kick it out of play. If it's not kicking the channel, let the player get up the pitch. You know, press like that. Mm. And that's why Arsenal was successful. You know, then you had like Sol Campbell, you had Lauren, you had Ashley mm. Cole. You know, all these players that kind of went by the same philosophy. First and foremost, they love to defend. Mm. Arsenal don't know and they learned yeah. yeah not so much Sol Campbell because he was quality anyway but the rest of them like you're saying like even mm. we converted Colo Torre from a yeah. centre midfielder to a centre back partly invincibles mm. but they all grew up and Ashley Cole coming through the system mm. they I think Lauren was a midfielder as well yeah, they all grew yeah. up learning yeah. mm. from defenders at the moment if you're a young player coming up who are you looking at and going oh, I can learn from him yeah. mm. you're not the only way you're learning is watching videos of other teams play yeah. what do you or, think of, what do you think of um, to, actually two Christians as a, as a player who's coming through Arsenal's academy mm. um, first of all do you think that players you know and it's not just Arsenal players young players in general because you, you spoke about how you know it was about to begin with cars and clothes mm. and stuff like that 
do you think it's too much too soon for some of these players? Yeah, because definitely. some of these players are on big money, even at that. I mean, I, I hear some of the money that these players are signing for now at 16 and things like that. And I, I, I was making this suggestion the other day that maybe they should do some sort of thing where almost like half of that money is kept back yeah, that's until you reach about 21 or something. I mean, I mean what, do you think it's too much too soon? Yeah, I mean, the one I always go back to is Balotelli. Like, he came from, I don't know what he was earning at Inter, but then he went Man City and he was probably earning close to 100, mm. something like that. This guy's a teenager. If you give 100 grand a week to any teenager, what do you think he's going to do with it? He's going to go and buy fast cars, he's going to go and get in trouble, he's going to do stupidness because, you know, that hunger of working to get there, all of a sudden you've got it now, now you want to enjoy it. Mm. And I think that can some, you know, that I didn't earn 100 grand a week, but even what I was earning, that kind of took my mind off the ball a little bit. And I think now you get too much too soon. I, sp I see Thierry Henry in Dubai one time and he said the same thing to me. He said like, my youth team was actually really unlucky because we were behind the Invincibles. Mm. If we came through afterwards, or even like a few years before or something, a lot of us would have been playing in Arsenal's team or in the Cups or something like that. But we was just unfortunate, the timing was wrong. Mm. But we definitely had a lot of players that were cap capable of playing in the Premier League. Mm. And that's the other question I was going to ask you, is that what do you think now of some of those young players that are coming from the academy? We've seen, um, that's the one thing we've seen recently is a lot of them have been getting a chance. So, mm. you know, Saka, um, Maitland-Niles, Niles, um, uh, Smith Rowe, mm. you know all these guys. Are, um, Joe Willock. I think. What, what do you what are you making of these guys that are coming through the academy at the moment? I think they're good players. I think they've got a lot of talent. I think they've got ability. But I think there's too much on their shoulders too soon. Like they're playing in a struggling team. If you, you know, if you took them players like see like Foden, you yeah. put him in Man City's team. He looks like a million dollars because he's playing such good football, <coughs> scoring goals. You know, they're winning more games than they're losing. You can get that confidence as a young player. But I think at Arsenal, it's like you can see that some of them, sometimes you go on the pitch and you're going to be scared you know you've got 65,000 people mm. you know with expectation I so think I feel it's too, like, too so soon somebody like a Maitland-Niles right you see some games and you can he makes some mistakes and you're like but you forget that he's still yeah a guy that's come through the system and mm. it's, really, it's it, really hard for the youngsters it's hard it's, it's, it's hard. Really the, tough, the Man hard. City one was the biggest eye opener because you know we lose Kolasinac just before half time we've now got no left back Saka is what 17 years old and he's been told to go on and play the second half as a left back when he's not one against arguably one of the best attacking teams and how much do you feel as a 17 year old coming out there thinking you, feel, you must feel defeated straight away because like, you're 3-0 down as yeah. well and you know you can hear you don't know what people are saying about you but you can hear the, the crowd booing you're on that pitch you're part of that team you'll be thinking oh they're booing us you know you can't mm. You can't get away from that. You can't get away from that. Yeah. And I think it's too much too soon at Arsenal. They're playing, you know, like I said, Foden. He's in, he's out, he's mm. in, he's out. He's playing in the cups, you know. He ain't got that pressure on him that, you know, yeah. they're losing every week. I know, it's, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you can, ex when, you, when you're on a team where you're winning, you're playing well and, you know, you've got that freedom, you can express yourself, you get that confidence and then you grow, you mm. go strength, from strength to strength. Like Ashley Cole. He came in, and I remember, you know, he was he was nervous and everything. But then he went from strength to strength because he was in a team that was winning. He was in a team where the pressure wasn't on him to perform. Mm. He was in there to like basically, you know, learn and, and get mm. better. And he had men mm. around him. Yeah, he had men around him to guide him. him. You yeah. know, Arsenal right yeah. now don't have that. I know what you mean. It's, mm. it's like even at the start of this season when we've played the first couple of games in the Europa League and we've done the Carabao Cup and we played Nottingham Forest and stuff. There was no pressure on them youngsters, and mm, a lot of them were playing, brilliant. and they were playing mm. brilliant. We beat Nottingham mm. Forest five. Now this is a Championship side. A team when we played them, they were second, they the were time, second in the table. Mm. They're not a bunch of mugs, do you know what I mean? And it was a big game for a lot of them kids, but they had never had the pressures of the Premier League, like mm. of getting Arsenal up the table. It's like this is our chance. Yeah. This is where we're going to play, and there's no pressure because the fans look at it as well and go, "Yes, yeah, the Carabao Cup. A lot of youngsters come in." There's no real expectation on that. Yeah. Everyone's there to enjoy it and see what the future could be, you know, the future of Arsenal is with mm. this player, that player. Mm. Now all of a sudden, we're struggling in the Premier League, injuries, kids are being basically told, come in and get us out of this mess. Yeah. <laughs> and it's difficult for them mentally. You know, I think, you know, as a young player, you want to go into a situation 
where you can go on a pitch and express yourself. Even with the Invincibles, look, Fabregas come in, he's out, he's in, he's out. Gilberto's there, Vieira's there, he's looking at mm. them, he's learning from them. Mm. Now it's like, I mean, I like Saka, especially Saka, I like watching yeah, he looks him. A, he looks yeah, he looks very really good, good. Can you imagine if he was at someone like Man City? He wouldn't be playing yet, would he? No, but he would be, he'd he'd be, be in, in and, and out. out. Like yeah, and you out. can see, they would be moulding him into like, he'd be looking at Sterling, he'd be looking at people like that, yeah, Bernardo yeah. Silva saying, that's what I need to get to, that's the level. Yeah. But now he's got people, he's looking at people like Ozil, that's like, Throwing his gloves down, throwing his gloves down, he's walking he's, around the pitch. You know, yeah, it's not yeah, good it's at all. Don't get me wrong. I, I think I, st- I think Ozil has ability, but I think now in the Premier League, I think the game's different. It's end to end. It's about, it's about energy, and he's kind of like the you know. He's a luxury player, so to speak. Mm. And when you look at Kevin De Bruyne, like when I saw him, he's yeah, it's, com- it's completely he's different. They play the same position, yeah. but the contrast in the two players mm. is just unmeasurable. And mm. I'm back to us all along, but I, I just I want to see him go now. I think this time's mm. done. Um, let me do a quiz. Right. <laughs> oh, mate. Let me do a quiz right now. Is this your Christmas quiz? DT versus Jay Boffroyd. Right? Oh my God! I'm gonna go with you first, Jay. Right. <laughs> Dear God. Name all of the clubs that you played for. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon and I then DT, I'm going to back in it. And then I'm going to get DT to name them as well. So come on. Four. So let's go. Sapporo, Jubilo, Muntong, QPR, Cardiff, Wolves. Oh, Sheffield Wednesday was in there as well. <laughs> On loan. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, no. Charlton, Blackburn, Stoke, Ooh. Arsenal, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Coventry. Did you miss any? Is that right? I think that's Oh, part. no, no, no. Yeah. Well, hey. Perugia, Italy. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah, yeah. I, can't, I can't forget that, innit? I throw it all away. 13 <laughs> Jesus Christ, I <laughs> forgot that one. Ooh. Nearly <laughs> forgot that one. My word. Jesus Christ. But, no, that's pretty, I think... Is he right? Yeah, that's... 13 clubs. Yeah, but that, it was your wow. most successful was Cardiff. Cardiff I think you yeah. scored 41 goals. In the time you spent at Cardiff, Cardiff. Cardiff. you know what I mean? Research. Done my research, man. Goals. That's how I even knew he'd done it. He got his England cap. It was a uh, friendly against France. Lost two one. He came on as a second half substitute. That's a, that was amazing. It was you amazing. still got the cap? Yeah. Yeah, that, I got it. I got it. That, 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 like what you're saying mm. there. That that makes me like. Thirteen I clubs. Smile, man. That's probably yeah, you had a good time in Perugia, though, didn't you? Yeah, no, <laughs> that, that, was, that, was, that was fantastic. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Love tell that. us, tell us about Japan, though. That's where you, that's where you've been now. We've been there for a couple of years now, haven't we? Four, four years. Yeah, four. And a half. Tell Come us, on, Robbie, do your research. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, that's what you do. You see, when you're not exactly sure how many to- how many years, you, you just say, say a couple. A couple. <laughs> what, you, what you should do is you say a few. <laughs> a, a few, few yeah. A few. Yeah. 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 But you've been there. You've been there four years. You've been there now. Mm. What's it like playing football in Japan? It's interesting to see uh, Liverpool just signed a. Um, yeah, I know he's been playing. Um, Don't Iniesta play right? in Japan as well? Yeah, Iniesta yeah. and yeah. Iniesta, David Villa, yeah. Torres was there, Jose wow. was there. And I, and sometimes he they used to show uh, some of the Japanese um, J League football on TV here, but they don't really show it now. But I remember very passionate support, very yeah. colourful support. I mean, you know, tell us about Japan. I th- I th- the big, the biggest difference is that there's no there's no hostile fans in any stadium. You could lose seven nil. We did lose seven nil one time and you know the fans were cheering and wow. come on next time and you know all this kind of stuff so there's going to be no fan wow. team yeah exactly yeah exactly there's no <laughs> but it, it's more it's more like yeah. a, for the fans there you know that when they come out and support the teams they come out you know with a wife you know daughter son and it's kind of like a family day out kind of thing yeah it's, it's not, like going shopping yeah it is it's like going to it's like just going to watch I mean rugby everyone it's a friendly crowd mm. um but it's a very cr- respectful nation, isn't it? Yeah, it's it, about yeah. yeah, culture, respect, everything. Mm. And but it's a, it's a really good level of football. I'm not just saying that because I'm playing there, but it is. And you can see that now. There's lots of Japanese players around Europe, in Germany, yeah. Italy, you know, Turkey, Belgium, and and mm. and I mean, this one here, it's gone to Liverpool now from Salzburg. Mm. You know, he looks really good as well. Yeah, he does. Good player. Uh, but I think because Japanese football is not televised. 
like you know the MLS or yeah. you know the Australian league and you know people just think oh it must be like China people are just throwing money at people mm. just to get the players over there but it's actually not like that you know the quality is good you know very technical you know very quick as well there's yeah. very quick players over there yeah especially like the wide players the fullbacks mm. they're really quick small nippy mm. um, but you know there's players that go there that haven't done that well you know Torres he went mm. there didn't do that well you know he scored like I think a couple of goals in two years. Wow. You yeah. know, um, Podolski, you know, he's done all right, but he, mm. he hasn't really set the world out. Iniesta's done well. David Villa done pretty well, but now he retired. Mm. Joe done well. He went to Nagoya. He mm. played at Man City. He's done mm. well. Um, and I think more players will come. Robin will always come. Mm. I was speaking to him. He always come to my club. Mm. Yeah, and That'd be good. Yeah, I mean, I was I was trying my hardest to get him. There. I was talking <laughs> to him, texting him, and mm. but in the end, he decided not to because of family reasons. You mm. know, his kids were at school and whatnot, and mm. it was important years for him. So he just decided. Do you speak the language? Him. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> he's, no supposed to, he's supposed to go over there no, and no. pick it up and but adjust. Robert, do you know what it is? He's a Gareth Bale. No, do you know what it is? It's yeah, not you're doing that. a Gareth Bale. They now. don't expect you to learn the language because it's that difficult. Like. They just give you straight away. No, no, straight away. Every foreigner's got a translator. They give Mm. every foreign player a translator. They don't expect you to learn the language. When I go on the training pitch, my translator's there. You know, when I when when I'm when I'm on the pitch, he's in the dugout. They don't expect you to learn the language because it's so difficult. Wow, you know? that's mad. I thought yeah. you were going to see a translator running down a wing with you. <laughs> <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost. Hit down the line. <laughs> if I get injured, he comes on the pitch. Oh my yeah, it's, what's wrong? You know, that kind of thing. That's it's like, yeah. Yeah, That's so. crazy, man. Imagine yeah, that as a job. But I mean, it's a, it's a great country. Mm. It is a great country. You know, I've, when Chelsea came in pre-season, they played against one of the best teams, Kawasaki. Mm. They found it difficult. You know, I think Kashima played Real Madrid in the World Club Cup. You know, and I think Ronaldo scored in the last minute of extra time to win it. Wow. I think it was 3-3. Mm. You know, they've got strong teams there. But again, it goes unnoticed because, you know, it's not televised like... Yeah, it used to be. At one time, they used to, they used to show um, some of it on Skype. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I noticed now it's more, like you said, MLS, Australian. Yeah, they Australian, show it yeah. in Australian. Yeah. That's mad. Yeah. Uh, hopefully Arsenal get over to Japan for a yeah, we'll make, yeah, yeah, it'd be brilliant. To They've got a place nice. to stay as well now. Whoops. <laughs> 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 around Jay's house, that's it. That ain't big that's enough. It. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you, you know, being over there is, you, you know, everyone who comes back from Japan always says such an amazing country. So, so well organised, so, yeah. techno- you know, the, the technology there and everything, you know. So clean. More than mm. anything, like you, you go to a football stadium here, and afterwards there's rubbish everywhere. There, people We've take, their, people yeah. take their rubbish home. Yeah, Do you know what? I, I saw, up, I they saw, did it the World Cup, yeah, the World cleaning Cup, the stadium in, in the um, not just that, but in the changing rooms as well. The the Japan national site, they clean the changing room before yeah, they, they t- left. Yeah, yeah. Put it's a very respectful nation. Yeah. Yeah. It's all built on respect. Yeah, respect. It? Yeah, everything. Yeah. That's it, good. It's really good. It's I tell you, it's so safe out there. You know, you see kids walking to school like five years old. You know, you ain't seeing that in England. Mm. You know, you know, even when you're driving, everything is about giving way, and you know, it's just so. Wow, it's so nice like to live. The place. It, it, it's nice there. Mm. You know, the weather's good. You get a real <laughs> summer. You get you see four seasons here. You know, once one month of summer, and then it's mm. great. You know, mm. it, it is it is a lovely place to live. What's the coldest it gets out there? Where I'm living now, it's like all well, minus ten, twelve. It's like Oof. snows like. Wow. Oof. Yeah, it snows crazy out there now. Like we play in a dome. You seen our stadium? No, I'm seeing your stadium. See our stadium. It's like in a dome. They want you to do it now. Go on, go on. Get What's out. What's our stadium there? The show's there. <laughs> 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 our stadium, you know our stadium's seen... one of the best in the world. It will be is one it, of the best like, in the world. Is it like, um, it must be similar then. I went to Atlanta United Stadium and that was similar. Like a dome. The, the, yeah, it's it, a dome. Yeah, like it's yeah. inside and or they can open the roof and that. Yeah, those stadiums are nice. See, it's going to get it for you. What's the capacity? I think 45 or something. 40. Wow. And do they, they get good attendances? Yeah, we get like we get like 35, 36 every week. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, That's all right, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's good. We're coming, man. We've got to come for a game. Yeah, the, yeah, we're going to have to come over for a game. Robbie's going to take <laughs> us on his private jet. The, the, pitch, the pitch goes into the stadium. Oh, wow. That's nice. Oh, wow. Oh, that's mad. That is yeah, mad. It's good, man. It's lovely. Um, you know, it's the stadiums there are good. I think that was... Yeah. 
uh, David Beckham was the last to score in that stadium against uh, Argentina, was it? In the World Cup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. wow. a lot of those were built for the World yeah. Cup, weren't they? But uh, everything's mm. really well organised. Yeah. Um, stadiums are really good. You know, it's like I said, the standard. Mm. You're now, how old are you now? What, 37, 38? 37, man. Yeah. So, sorry. 4983. 2, 82, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got that wrong. <laughs> so, you know, you've got to be thinking about. I ain't thinking about that. Towards the end, or you yeah, still got thought, l- lots of playing left? I not, think. I mean, you're looking super fit I feel, and super healthy. To be honest, I feel that I've been fortunate that I haven't had any injuries. Like, you're as 37, in. you don't look you know, nowhere near <laughs> Yeah, but I don't look 40. <laughs> Do you know, it's only you that looks your yeah, age. But you don't, <laughs> you don't, you don't look I don't near. feel it. I don't feel it. Like, I'm training every day, I'm still playing every week. Yeah. Um, like I said, I've, I'm fortunate that I haven't had no operations like on my knees and mm. my ankles and wow. nothing like that. Yeah. So I think that's what's kept me yeah. in, in good shape. Because I think injuries take toll on your body. Mm. You know, mm. and I think the fact that I haven't had none of them is why. Mm. You know, so lots more years of playing for you? I wouldn't say lots more, but you know, I look two, three more years. Mm. How yeah, long is your contract left in Japan? I've got a year left here. A year left? Mm. Yeah, but I mean, over there, you know, when you, I think once you pass like 30, 34, you start, you know, it's like here, you start signing one year deals every mm. year kind of thing, mm. just, you know. Management or coaching or anything like that? Could we see you in the future on Mikel Arteta's coaching staff? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't, I don't, Is it I not for you or? I'm, I'm not sure, like I haven't, it, it, it doesn't turn me on. Like I'm not thinking, mm. oh, I want to manage. Mm. Like I haven't even done all my badges. Like I don't really feel like that. I feel like I've dedicated my life to football since I was like eight years old. I, at the moment, you know, there is a chance that I might get into coaching or do something within football. But at the moment, I just feel like once, you know, once I decide to finish football, then you know, I want to dedicate myself to something else and be successful at that. Mm. You know, I don't, I don't want to be one of them players where football retires me. I want to retire from football. Mm. Mm. That's, yeah, brilliant. That's, that's brilliant that's really good and the thing is as well if you do when you run down that contract next year <laughs> you know I've got a team now haven't I you know what I mean <laughs> I'm going to get Jay can't you, you, play you for me is, can you afford those wages <laughs> hey listen don't you worry <laughs> about that don't you worry <laughs> I mean, about that you, you, I mean you know about the yen <laughs> hey listen <laughs> the yen's quite strong at the moment yen, yen, yen. listen <laughs> listen <laughs> don't worry don't worry I've I got, I got a good back in i got a good back man in man go from playing in that dome right to go play on some little hey listen don't mock my team you know look we don't play no bad up pictures yeah we, as you can see me and him have got a bit of a rivalry going on there's a, there's a lot that we can't actually speak about because it hasn't come out yet but some of the stuff that's come out it came out this week and yeah, I know yeah, James I mentioned in a, a 7-0 yeah. in there as yeah, well yeah 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 he, he keeps going on about 7-0 <laughs> yeah. he keeps going on about 7-0 yeah, 7-0 slap up like, you know, United like, stand they missed a load of chances though before forget yeah. about missed a load of, you say this every, they never even had a chance I watched the game man Robbie was, go away no hold on wait this was <laughs> <a little laughs> no no what was it? no there was two of your games on that video yeah 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 what was the first one the GRM game they missed a load of chances yeah, they, they should have yeah. been they should have been in the lead about 3-0 yeah I know before you lost yeah I know but we won 5-1 that's the team we beat 6 Well done. But anyway. Yeah, but you, they anyway. didn't have a goalkeeper that game, did they? Anyway, they put their midfielder in goal. Listen, you yeah, 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 were lucky. <laughs> you were lucky. Uh, they they shouldn't even get him <laughs> back. If you watched it. Yeah, and then we beat United Stand 7-0. Yeah. Tore right. them apart. Yeah, and I thought, you know, you got played all right in that game. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Top of the league, already in the final. Yeah. Well done, That's one you. thing that we can say. We are the first team in the final. It's a bit unfair how the thing worked out because you got to play your games back to back. No, no, that no. It like, wasn't when unfair. everybody else has been in like a big risk, you know, like, and then they've got to come and get back into it and that train. That sounds like excuses, man. Yeah, exactly. No, no, it's the truth. Well, right? like right, right, Jay, let me tell you, let me tell you <laughs> exactly what happened. No, back. no, no. Let me tell you what happened, right? I had my game plan the first game. AFTV were then meant to play their game, but it got called off um, because the team they were playing, there was yeah. personal <coughs> reasons, so the game had to be called off. So what that meant was is that I had to play two games back to back. Now, because I've won and I've now progressed to the final, Robbie's like, oh, well, it was easy. It's but no, no, but, but there's another pressure on so that because, because, because like, no, 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 because I could have lost them teams. two games. Hmm. I could have lost them two Both games teams you've played and I was well. out. I could have lost it. Hmm. But Both, because I won them. Hold on. Both teams he's played, right? Sure. And in that run. Right? Shook. 
None of the amount of players had missing. Oh, get play. away, no, man. No, it's in the video. Go away, man. I'm watching the video. Go away. What, Go what's away. the video you see? Oh, yeah, you know, it sounds like it uses. How many players does? How many players are there missing? I'm going to have to watch it. You, you know the thing is, right? See, this no, is no, matter, <laughs> no matter what level of football you're playing, yeah? This you're going to have players missing. No, you're going to have players You know, man, you know, grassroots football is mad to say, where you go, yo, where are you? Yeah, bro. I ain't getting up to the... I missed the bus. The first game that he had, right? He had about five players didn't turn up the next game when they played for, what was, how many games players they have missing four or five no. as well they have three players missing right, but sorry, sorry. what, he, sorry, doesn't, yeah, I mean, what right. he doesn't I'll tell you what he doesn't like to repeat yeah is that for this game that we won 7-0 yeah I have a goalkeeper and I have a reserve goalkeeper on the Saturday before the game on the Wednesday my first choice goalkeeper um, tore his hamstring playing on the Saturday on the <coughs> same day my reserve goalkeeper broke his hand I had no goalkeeper for this game on the Wednesday, the I put a midfielder in goal and we won 7 0. Shut up. <laughs> Five <laughs> players missing, man. Four players in the first what's game. What's more important? Five, right, what, what's, right. what's worse? Losing two goalkeepers and not having an actual goalkeeper or missing a couple of outfield players? Yeah, I think it's. Yeah! I think he's got you there. I think he's got you there. Sorry, Stop mate. Back in there, yeah, you don't like it. You are coming back. I'm being honest with you. I'm being honest with you. Are you putting a midfielder in goal and still win? Yeah, exactly. Well, did the team know his player was missing so many players? Oh, shut He's up, a man. Midfielder. If yeah. I was playing against a midfielder and go, I'd be shooting from everywhere. Yeah, well, it's you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, me. you can shoot from everywhere. You, you see some of the ballers in this, so they, they haven't got the ability that you have. You know what I mean? Although there's some good, some good um, young players in, in that guy's playing. You got one guy, I think, um, who's playing up front, a tricky one. He looked really good. Oh, uh, you know, young couple lad. Games. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah he some broke, good little broke some, some defenders' ankles, man. Yeah, there's some few, <laughs> few, few good little players, and you know. But of course, to make it all the way is an, another. A you have to step. do. You have got to do that every single week. Yeah, you every single just, training you session. That hard That's the difference in it. That's the levels in it. I think it's now hard. it's even more difficult. It is. I think because of, because of the financials now, it's difficult to. I don't even. I'm not even sure. I don't even. Teams I don't like, like Chelsea. Like, What's the point in having a youth team? Yeah, I don't like academies. Well, you have to play them now. <laughs> yeah, I don't like academies. Yeah, like my son was at an academy, um, and he was. At Stevenage, that's like League Two, mm. but even there, the things you see behind the scenes that a lot of people are not privy to, I saw it. And he got injured, broke his leg, and it was like they forgot about him. Shit, yeah. It was just like, yeah, see, that's yeah, the difference the, between the really big academies, yeah, yeah. where they, you know, basically, it's like they got a hospital inside the yeah, academy. like they, they <laughs> took, they took <laughs> care of when, when he you, broke you his know, leg because he, he was playing for Stevenage, it was pre season, he broke his leg. They took care of the hospital side of things, done the operation by the next morning, put the plate in, done everything that was fine. And then once that was done, it was the like, aftercare. bye bye, there's no aftercare. I had to pay out of my own pocket to get rehab the stuff. aftercare and yeah. get the rehab done. And he was out of the game that's for right. a, well over a year. That's yeah. But that's at a professional club. Yeah. Like I, think, I, think, I think the thing is though, um, with academies is that that's the, that's the difference. Like those top academies, mm. when you play them, they've got everything. They've got all the facilities yeah. and everything. But the, when you start going down beyond, especially beyond the championship, those but I think even now, the championship, it, it's, the championship before, I think, championship, premiership, now is like a huge step. Yeah. Now you Big you know you have to really spend money and like yeah to, to stay in the. Look Premier at some League. of the teams in the championship. Yeah. Is it Aston Villa got money pro money problems now because they spent so much? Aston Villa. Yeah. Well, they got new owners, didn't they? They got oh, new okay. American owners and who've, who've invested a lot. Smart but you to that. to get in the Premier League and stay in there, you got to spend loads of money to yeah, come out of the championship. I mean, Leeds are still there. How many years have they been yeah. there? Mm. So, some but listen, problems. um, we've come to the end of the podcast today. It's been brilliant having Jay Buffroyd on yeah, here. Really man. insightful. Um, you know wishing you all continued success Thanks, with your man. playing Appreciate career it. over there in Japan next time you're over here we want you to come back on again yeah, definitely, and man. talk about the successes of Mikel Arteta and how he's turned everything around hopefully, and how hopefully. what hopefully. was all those fans thinking about yeah. in the beginning having a go at Arteta what an inspired choice mm. by the board and but mm. you know what one thing we, we, did, we didn't really say um, throughout this podcast and I'm sure both of you are going to agree the pressure is on the board. I don't think if it goes wrong with Arteta, people are going to blame him. I think the, 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 the pressure is on. They've taken a big gamble. Mm. It has to work. Has to. Well, I don't know what you guys think, but... Yeah, I agree. I think it has to work. Mm. I said this. Arsenal's the hardest job in football, I think, at the moment. At a top, a top league. Mm. I think it's the hardest at the moment. And I think he's going to have to do so much to get Arsenal back. Mm. He's yeah. got to hit the ground running. To even hit, to, to even think about Champions League football. Yeah. 
Well, listen, yeah. thank you both. Oh, Merry Christmas to you, DT. Merry Christmas, right. man. Merry Christmas. 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 Yeah, man. presents coming from me, man. <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, man. Christmas, DT. Merry Christmas, and, uh, you, man. You know, don't forget you can download this podcast. The link is in the description. Don't forget the 888 Sport link as well. Um, click onto that and get over there. Tell them our Tottenham are a small club. I'm not supposed to be... Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> go over there and say do that. But um, yeah, get over there. And um, we will be back next week. Um, let's hope... Uh, over this Christmas period that, you know, Arsenal can bring a bit of cheer to the fans.